Oh, my name's Fox Rantone. I'm Fox. I just got out of if. Um, which is really good and surprising. Anyways, we're going to watch this and then we'll get into everything else. All right, ready? Th we're going to watch the trailer and then we'll get into it. Three, two, one. Yeah. I have insurance. Worth it. Desperate. Question: Why did these kids forget? I'm definitely gonna have to uh, lower the audio for this. We're sucking the oxygen out of the room. Honestly, Doc, this is how it's gonna be. I'm just gonna wheel myself back and plug in. So. We started the matchmaking agency to help it find new kids. This. <laughs> This this trailer lies to you. <laughs> it's pretty good though. I can help you. How? I'm a kid. You are the chosen one. No, no. Let's not give her a complex. Good luck, short stack. It's all up to you. No pressure. Hope this works. All right, let's find these ifs and kids. Cheats! How did a kid create an invisible if? I can find anyone. Anywhere. Go. You got my help. Thanks for doing it. Don't look him in the eye. Which one? Yeah, that's gonna grow right back. That's not in the movie. At least the eye is the, the grow back part, is it? Am I disappearing? No. Oh. All right, I'm not ready for this. I need to throw up or I need a snack. It's one of the two. Gross. We have to help. We'll take imagination. Yes, we do. Put some pants on, you're freaking everyone out. How'd it go? Oh, oh my god. This is like a yeah. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, shall we? <laughs> and mom said too much candy isn't good for your tummy, but I said, oh my god. Oh. My eyes can taste it. I'm so sorry. You don't taste that in your eyeballs? Brandon Dreary. Can I just say also, John Krasinski is like... <laughs> I'm trying to think of like... He's the opposite Ryan Reynolds, but not like in a bad way. Because I, I don't know, like... I don't know how to say it. Ryan Reynolds is more is known to being smartass and all this stuff. And, but like John Krasinski... Can be a smart is a smart ass too, but I don't know. I don't know. It's a weird. It's weird. Like they they almost mirror each other, which is kind of funny. And he's also like in this movie too, which the trailers do not say, because that was a complete surprise. Even though I've never seen the trailer before, but I've only seen like you know little bits. Um, that I did, and I, you know I looked away. Um, so this movie sets it up where it makes it look like oh, it's you know it's. Foster's home for imaginary friends. The Foster's home for imaginary friends. The whole idea is they're gonna. This is a little bit of spoilers, I guess. Uh, go watch this movie. It's good. Go watch it. Um, it, it's the, the trailer is making it seem like oh, you know, it's Foster's home for imaginary friends. Uh, you know, they try to find new kids for the ifs that no longer have any, don't that don't have kids, and if they don't do it, they'll disappear forever. <laughs> die or something <laughs> literally that's maybe like the first bit of it and then like it drops that completely because it's like one the ifs are spoilers i guess the ifs are in no way gonna die or disappear like at one point he brings that up and ryan rose straight says yeah but i don't think that's how this works um and another one and then you have uh thing where like you know they try to do the whole like you know hat you know here's a new kid but like the kids can't see him or they can't you know or something like that. it's and eventually uh like they completely abandon that because they're just like you know like oh well you know our kids still need us and it's actually like it switches to where instead of it being about um Instead of it being about, like, them trying to find new kids for them to be with, 
it's them trying to find it's trying to teach you know people who say they've grown up or you know forgotten to remember being a kid remember their friends and their imaginary friends and pretty much like reconnect with that you know inner child kind of thing and i love that shit because especially because like the opening it has kind of like an up opening where like you slowly see the life of the main character this girl as uh she's growing up and you see like her mom died of cancer at least it's assumed it's, you know it's cancer uh died of cancer and like it's all done without really saying too much like through visuals and all that stuff and eventually she's like you know she like kind of says you know i'm not a kid anymore when her dad is in the hospital for like i guess like a heart something wrong with the heart and he's gonna have a surgery about it she's worried about it and once that happens she starts seeing imaginary friends and she slowly has to and she slowly uh you know decides you know oh i can i can help these i can help them and all this stuff uh ryan reynolds seems to be you know someone who's trying to help keep track of them or help them out too and while this is all going on too um ryan reynolds hints at things like you know like like the, what is it uh i can't remember i think her name is blossom the little cartoon bug her like blossom tries to explain like you know oh you know what, what ifs are and like and like say oh you know this is Oh, this is and like uh, Ryan Reynolds goes like, no, no, she knows who I am. We met, <laughs> and the girl's like, wait, when the fuck did we ever like? When did we ever meet? I don't know who you are. I don't know who any of these people are. Um, and it's actually really funny too because like you see things like at one point where Ryan Reynolds breaks into like this kid's room because Blue here, who's purple, because uh, his kid was colorblind. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, he. What is it? He like uh, what's that to be? Like he tried to like bond with a kid, and like I guess the kid could kind of sense him. I guess he made him made her cry for an hour. Uh, and there's points where I'm watching. I'm like, man, like Ryan Reynolds is risking a lot. Like he could go to jail for like you know breaking into someone's home and all this other shit. Um. But it's kind of answered to me. I don't want to spoil it too much, but like I was kind of like, okay, I gotta get the twist here. But uh, <laughs> the movie is a like a lighthearted, fun movie. Like there's nothing like bad about it, and like honestly, it's kind of really it has a lot of fun with it too. And at one point, it's kind of like a psychic horror rep, kind of. Um, it feels like Roger Rabbit mixed with you know Balls Home for Imaginary Friends as well as uh you know, a bunch of other, th like, uh, then, like, you know, all these other things, like, at one point in this place, which it's a, a retirement home for ifs, um, you know, like, Ryan, Re Ryan Reynolds is, like, jaded, he does not give a shit about anything, he's like, yeah, I don't, he's very cynical, and, all and like, it's kind of funny, too, because, again, like, like, I said, like, John Krasinski and Ryan Reynolds kind of, like, are mirror images, kind of, of each other, at least in this, because, and this John Krasinski plays her dad, and he's, like, always kind of happy, trying to make her laugh, trying to make her feel like a kid again, and all this stuff. And then you have Ryan Reynolds, who's kind of doing the opposite, where he's like, like, look, like, the world's cynical, like, he's cynical, like, his dad's trying, her dad's trying to be happy and show, like, the bright world. He's just cynical, like, he's, like, done, he's like, I don't care. <laughs> and the thing is, too, like, I'm pretty sure, like, that analysis of those two are supposed to kind of mirror each other is a main thing especially when we learn later on more about her connection his connection with her and all this stuff it's done really well uh and like also the fun thing too is that uh there's also slight hints obviously like little things hidden in there like at one point uh when they're like when she goes into her uh closet to get something there's a calvin and hobbes book and i'm like i see that i understand that all right uh, I'm like, all right, I get that. I like, I get the ref I get the reference there. That's a nice little reference. Um, you, you know, you get stuff like that, or um, <laughs> or certain like movies that had like I think one when there was like an old movie like about like imaginary friend that he holds up like a thing that shows like the imaginary friend, uh, like old black and white movie. Um, but it's pretty much like a really good quote. 
it, this this movie can pretty much kind of be summed up with a pretty good quote from uh, uh, C.S. Lewis. Hold on. Uh, let's see here. Growing up. Okay. Yeah. Because this is a quote from C.S. Lewis. When I became when I became a man, I put away childish things, including the fear of childishness, of childishness and the desire to be grown, very grown up. Which, yeah, like that's the thing. Like people complain, like you know, shit, like you know, why are you know someone, you know, collects toys, stuffed animals, whatever, um, and you know, likes cartoons, especially you know, if you're watching this, you probably watch some of my reviews about cartoons and stuff like that. Like it's the idea of like you know. It's stupid to be like, yeah, oh no, I have to put this away. I can't do this. Or I'm like that. Like that's really like because it's childish. What the fuck does that matter? Have fun if you have fun with it. Have fun with it. What the fuck does it matter if it's childish or not? And that's what kind of what this movie is about. And I like that a lot. Ryan Reynolds is also perfect for that too. Like, uh, and honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if Ryan Reynolds did help with the trailer for this. Because, again, like, it feels like a smart-ass thing where, like, it sets up where, like, oh, the ifs are going to disappear. Oh, we have to give them to the other kids. And, like, they completely... So, like, look at this. Look, look at what this says. Yeah, that's going to grow right back. Saving them all. There's nothing to save. <laughs> uh, but also, on that same note, too, like, again, it's very imaginative and it has fun with it. Like, when they go to the retirement home where it's, it's just a sad, depressed place, uh, Pooh Bear here... Uh, says like, oh, did he give you the great tour? And she's like, no. You're like, would you like to give it to him? And he's like, he's like, what? And pretty much like with her imagination, she slowly makes it like a more like also like she slowly walks like it's a horror movie. And Ryan Reynolds is just running through, like, oh shit, as things are changing around him. Like every friend's room is like their perfect place they would want to live. Like you kind of see that here with the dragons at nights. He gets like thrown into a a pool at one point wakes up like in a painting all the paintings come to life and like the whole idea of like imagination now the, the major thing about it is about imagination helping you and like you know and remembering to be a kid and all this stuff and having fun which honestly yeah <laughs> Ryan Rouse pretty much fits that bill a lot I don't know like he's I don't know it's the idea I don't know it's the idea I think of smart asses just like you have that to be a smart ass, I think, and maybe I'm just tooting my own horn because I consider myself a smart ass. You have to have that bit of childishness in you <laughs> because that bit of childishness is the reason why you'll be able to step back and look at something stupid and be like, that's stupid. <laughs> like, why are you doing that? And I feel like Ryan Reynolds has that, that amount of like, yeah, that's the reason why he's able to be a smart ass as much as he is and why he's perfect for Deadpool. Um, also, it makes me want to see, because I think Ryan Reynolds and John Cusack don't really share screen time in this movie, but, um, they, uh, like, I, I, I want to see a movie with them, uh, like, like, buddy cop, I feel like, because both of them are smart asses. That's the thing, though. At least, like, you know, like, Jim from The Office was a smart ass, but, like, in a more so and that's probably the thing jim is a or john krasinski is a smart ass i feel like in a more subtler way at least in you know where he can play a smart ass at least in a much more subtler way where it's like more smaller things but ryan Reynolds can do it loudly and so and it's very like opposite energies but similar character is the kind of thing i i think that's i think that's why i, I feel like the these two are kind of mirrors of each other it's a similar energy it's a similar personality at least in that sense i maybe i'm completely wrong with this it's a similar personality but also different energies that come from that also the same thing too if you're gonna think you're like blue is gonna be like a major like they really hype up like blue and all this stuff like in the trailers like like every i think friend has their own like set like bit that's in there and like no character, at least, like, because like, I usually care, like, Blue would, like, annoy me at some point. He really did <sighs> He really didn't. And, like, eventually when they when they start going to try to have their, ki their old, kids who are not older remember them, it does get, like, very heartfelt and nice. Like, I, 
I really do recommend. Uh, also, like, we never really, like, we see her with this locket. I don't think it's ever explained, like, what exactly it is. It may have something to do with her mom or not. I don't know. Or, like, I guess her maybe guiding the way because it is a compass. I don't know. But, it, but it's... It's a really fun uh, movie. Like, I like a legit. Like, it's just a fun, feel-good movie. Like, there's no, like, big bad. There's no, like, really, like... Um... There's no really, like, big, uh, uh, like, oh, no, like, you know, Blue is dying, and, like, you know, we believe in you, no, no, nothing like that. It's straight up just, like, a fun movie where it's just this girl slowly rediscovering being a kid as well as helping other adults rediscover being a kid while also with extremely cynical <laughs> uh, Ryan Reynolds, which is kind of funny as hell. Um, but yeah, this is, yeah. And it's funny too, because eventually like you see, like, you don't know who's, if is who's, but like, eventually like you do kind of like see it and like, oh, that's that character. And like, you see it like, oh, that actually makes sense. Especially when you see like the background and all that stuff. It's really fun. It gives a very Roger Rabbit-esque feel to it. And yeah, I honestly could want to see more. I honestly could see them doing like another Roger Rabbit-esque movie like this it, with like, these like characters on it or something like that like i think it would be fun tell me if you didn't comment below thanks for watching tell me if you guys saw if i think it's really fun tell me if you guys thought about you know the whole thing but thanks for watching for your videos hopefully enjoy this um this is a really good movie i liked it a lot um and we will see you later i don't i do think like the like because the bear is like you know i think like 97 i don't remember he's like, like really old and like, I, I, him being, like, a stuffed teddy bear and all that stuff, I really do think it's probably, like, a nod to Winnie the Pooh, who's, you know, like, he's an imaginary friend and all that stuff. So, yeah, like, yeah, I honestly could have used Pooh, too, because he's public domain now, so.